Hey everybody, um, I wanted to just do a quick video on um, dialog boxes in LabVIEW. So I've done some in the past showing kind of some of the functions that ship with LabVIEW that allow you to create dialog boxes. Um, today I just wanted to show how you can create your own custom dialog boxes. Um, that way you can define um, how they behave, what they might do, additional logic, um, and you know different inputs. Um, so, for example, if we were to go to dialog and user interface and use the uh, prompt user uh, function, um, this will launch a dialog, um, but I'm only able to either input a number, a checkbox, or text entry. And I have to basically, in this dialog, go define all of these things that I want, and I can't change it on the fly. Um, so, you know, this works great for just a simple, hey, I need to collect some basic information, but sometimes we need more than that. Uh, and sometimes we need to pr give the user, you know, maybe certain options to select from and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, we can basically define our own VIs and how we want them to behave. So let's go um, for this. I'm going to add a combo box. Um, and let's just go define a couple of items. And this could be anything, right? I'm just going to call it, you know, item one. Item two, item three. And let's say we also, on the same dialog box, want to add like some sort of numeric control. So I can drop, you know, whatever I want onto this VI. Um, and then in my block diagram, I can add whatever functionality I want. So here I've kind of statically linked stuff to the combo box. I also could add code that basically dynamically loads what those options are, you know, as this gets called, etc. Um, and then I can also make it so these things can get passed out. So whatever the selection is will get passed out. So let's call it, you know, combo box out and numeric out. So that way, um, you know, maybe this VI can pop up collect some information from the user, and then pass that out to the rest of my code to be used however I want. Um, so yeah, you can see these do show up here though. So there's a couple things you can do if you don't want the output stuff to be shown. Um, one thing you can do is, um, if you go to the block diagram and right click on the indicator, there's this hide indicator option. So you can see the combo box is now gone on the front panel. So that's one thing you can do is you can just hide them and you can then show them again with that. Um, so that's one way you can kind of hide them. Another thing you can do is you can just put them off the screen. So um, that way, you know, this is all it's going to be shown. Um, they're still there present, but I don't actually see it. And then, yeah, just make sure you link it to your connector pane. Um, yeah, and then I can scoot those off screen. So we do also need to add some code so that this behaves how I want it to. So simplest way, and this is going to vary based off what you're trying to do um, in your uh, dialog. Um, the simplest way is just to add a simple event loop um, and add some sort of way for this to stop. So that could be something like clicking the X. Um, we also can just add like a OK button or something. Some sort of button that tells the dialog box, yep, that's what I want to enter. Um, so yeah, it could be different things depending on what you're trying to do, uh, like a continue button works great, um, or it could even be like exiting out of there. So now let's go in our event case, and we're going to basically use that OK button to stop this loop. So yeah, really simple uh, event handler. Um, basically when I click the OK button, it's going to read the values of the combo box in numeric and then write them to the indicators. And that's it, that's all of my code. Now if I wanted to add additional code, I can add code before my loop, after my loop, I can add different cases in here. So like maybe as you, you know, um, select something in the combo box, it'll do something in the numeric or something like that. You know, you can add whatever code you want here and customize that as much as you want. So now we have a fully functional, um, uh, dialog box. Um, now the next thing you'll want to do is adjust some of the VI properties to behave more like a dialog box. Um, so if you go down to window appearance, um, there is a dialog option 
Um, so you can just check dialogue if that's what you want. And you can also can customize that even further. So I like to go to the custom um, personally just because I yeah, can control anything and everything. And I can make my dialogues, dialogue boxes behave a little differently. Um, and I can also change basically what's going to be shown at the title bar. So by default, it's going to show the VI name. I can also name that anything I want. So I can also add additional details beyond just saying, hey, this is the name of the VI. I can add whatever sort of title I want. And then if we go to customize, um, there's a few options. Um, the title bar one, um, this one, sometimes I leave on, sometimes I leave off. It depends on the dialogue box. If I want people to be able to X out of it or minimize it or something like that, then you, you'll want the title bar there. Um, but sometimes, right, I, I, this is like a mandatory dialogue box. I don't want to let people move on until they've done this thing. Then you can even take that away. And that basically forces that thing to, you know, close a certain way. Um, so, yeah, either one. This one, I usually leave it on, but there are a few cases where I've actually removed it. Um, and then I'll also uncheck the show menu bar and uh, show the scroll bars. You'll want to uncheck the show toolbar when running. Um, and if you uncheck that, you don't need to worry about unchecking these because they'll be hidden automatically when the toolbar is hidden. And you'll want to check uh, show front panel when called and close afterwards if originally called. So this stuff already kind of got configured when I switched it to be a dialogue. Um, but yeah, this is basically the configuration. And then the window behavior, this is one where I'll do different stuff. So um, you can basically set default, which just means it's a VI that's going to pop up. It's not necessarily front most. It can get moved around. It can get put behind other stuff, et cetera. Um, you can set it to be floating, which basically forces it to be in front of stuff. Um, and you can also set it to be, so you can still, with, with a floating window, you also can still interact with other VIs that are in the background. Um, whereas like modal basically forces that to be topmost and basically forces all your interactions to that until it's closed. So it's up to you how you want to do that. You can basically, you know, customize that how you want. By default, this is set to modal. Um, and then you also can define other characteristics. So things like allowing the user to close the window, um, resize, minimize. And based on what the dialog box does, you're going to pick different stuff. So it's up to you. Um, and I'll just leave it like this for now. Um, but yeah, decide on, you know, basically how you've set it up, what you want people to be able to do, right? Maybe you don't want people to be able to minimize it. Or maybe you have stuff that's rescalable and you want people to be able to resize it however they want, then yeah, check that box. It's up to you. Um, but that, this configuration here works great. Um, and then one other thing I usually do is in this window runtime position, um, I'll set the position. So I typically like centered um, just because then it pops up right in the middle of the screen. Unchanged is basically just going to put it wherever it was last so if it was you know saved in this top left corner it's going to pop up in this top left corner so um yeah it, sometimes it can become a little unpredictable because maybe you don't know where it was at last so um, i usually like to do centered um, or maximized um, depending on what it is but centered works great and then i can also specify which monitor i want um, if i have multiple monitors but yeah i'm not going to worry about that for this so i can click ok so now I have my dialog box configured. You can also hit control M and that switches it to run mode. So that way I can see what it will look like when it's running. Um, and then I can just hit control M again to basically get it back to edit mode. So now I have my dialog set up and yeah, let's just set up a simple demo that calls this. Um, so then to call that dialog box, I can just drop it down onto a different uh, VI and Let's uh, basically just read the outputs of that. Um, and I'm going to close this guy so you can see it's not open. But yeah, let's uh, demo um, dialog. Sweet. So let's save it, close out of it. Um, so yeah, now we've just got this other VI that's basically going to call that dialog, pop it up, and then display whatever was selected there. So let's run it. I get my dialog box, I can select item two, let's maybe put 55 in there, and click OK. And you can see I get out uh, what was selected there. 
Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. That's my uh, custom dialog box. And I can go customize the front panel of this however I want. And like I said, you also can add additional kind of logic and stuff in here that makes it do different things. So if you need to load stuff to be displayed or selected from here, or you know, based off of different actions on the dialog box, you want to trigger other things, you can. Um, and it doesn't just have to be like a simple event loop like this. You could have a more complex uh, you know, design pattern here. You could have like a queued message handler. You could have a state machine. You could have just about whatever you want. So you can basically define whatever code you want. It's really just a matter of setting up the VI properties and whatnot to behave like a dialog and then setting your code so that it will pop up and allow the user to select information and then close out after they are done selecting that information. So yeah, that would be how you can create custom dialog boxes in LabVIEW. Thanks for watching. Canon Controls is your gateway to mastering LabVIEW. Dive into programming for data acquisition, industrial communications, and manufacturing automation. Explore how to enhance your projects with cybersecurity best practices. Join the journey to elevate your skills and secure your systems with every episode.